Hey all, welcome back to Triple Goddess Soapery. My name is Angela and tonight we are making shampoo bars. Now this is a little bit of an impromptu video. I did record it with the plan to obviously do a little bit of a tutorial, but I haven't put out a video in a few weeks and I really wanted to get one out and I did restock my shampoo bars this week so I thought this might be a good time to just get a video out there and show you how I make my shampoo bars. Now this original recipe that I that I found is on Humble Bee and Me's website. It is called Rice Starch Shampoo Bars, I think. If you Google that, it'll come up. Now I have mod modified this shampoo bar to suit my needs, but the original base is really, really, really good. And you can tweak it here and there. So I do highly recommend going over to her website and picking up this recipe and trying it just as it is. I have very fine hair and very limp hair. And I love this recipe. It makes my hair, hair feel nice and light and fluffy and bouncy. And it's definitely suitable for all hair types. So with this, with this formula, you'll notice that it's very... Um, that these powders are very airborne. Two of the powders that I use are SCI powder as well as SLSA. They are both um, coconut based or coconut derived surfactants and they are extraordinarily airborne and can be very dangerous for your lungs. Very irritating to breathe it in and potentially um, could do damage to your lungs. So I use a respirator. I bought my respirator specifically for this purpose, although I do use it in my soap making too. And I highly recommend that you use a respirator. Just using a regular face mask is not gonna cut it. It's still gonna irritate your lungs. So be very careful with these powders. Now, besides those two powders, the other powder that I'm using here is rice starch. Uh, when you go looking for it in the store, it's I don't think you'll find something called rice starch. You're probably gonna find rice flour pretty much the same thing. It's very interchangeable. I don't want to say it's the same thing, but it is interchangeable. And that's what I'm using. There's two, a couple different brands that I can find that are very inexpensive. And if you're going to Superstore in Canada, you're going to find them in the ethnic aisle and the international aisle. And the one bag is yellow and red. And there's another one that's white with, I think it's red writing on it. It could be green, but you'll find it. It's, it'll be very obvious. Now to my powders, I'm also adding a little bit of mica. I personally only use 0.5% or less mica. Now I'm, I'm not worried about it coloring hair or dyeing hair or anything like that. It's not gonna leave that any color behind when you wash your hair, but it's just not necessary to use more. I get a really vibrant color with this as you'll see at the end. So that's all I use is about 0.5%, um, sometimes less, anywhere from 0.1 to 0.5. You could also use water soluble dyes at a very, very, very small amount, like 0.001% is enough. And that's basically it, I think, for all of my powdered ingredients. Once I get them all into the bucket, then I start measuring out my wet ingredients into the bucket. Now, I keep my respirator on basically for the whole process. But once it's all mixed up together as a dough, then you can take your respirator off. But personally for me, I just leave it on because it's easier. We're also going to use some cocoa metal propyl betaine, which is a liquid surfactant, another gentle surfactant. And we're going to put that in the pot as well. And then I have a few other things that I'm going to add in here as we go along. As well as the surfactants, I'm going to use an oil as my refatting agent. You could use a butter, but I just choose to use an oil. Now, for this, I'm using rice bran oil, but I will be, once I run out of rice bran oil, I will be reformulating this a little bit to switch that out for hemp seed oil because I do use hemp seed oil in most of my products. So that's what I'm going to use next time. I do have a couple other secret ingredients that are, you know, my, my uh, hot take on this recipe that makes this, this formula mine. You can use a pro any protein that you want. Her recipe calls for rice protein, rice bran oil, 
and rice starch, which, you know, makes it, you know, very much a rice water um, shampoo bar. And I know that there's a brand out there that very much has built itself around rice water. And rice water has been known for, I want to say decades or centuries, like without going and researching and Googling, like in, in Asia, rice water is very popular for hair treatments. And so with this, because it's a dry solid shampoo bar, you're getting all the goodness of rice water without actually having to, you know, go through the effort of making rice water. You're just using the rice starch and creating the rice water when you wash your hair. Now, this particular one, I'm using black opium type fragrance oil from Fizz Fairy. I actually, this, when I made, when I did this recipe or when I made this restock, I did four different scents. I did this one, I did my Jasmine Nights, as well as Cocoa Butter Cashmere and Honey Crisp Apple, which by the way, smells amazing. I'm really happy. If you like a fresh apple scent, that one is for you. It smells so good. But as far as this video goes, we're only going to go through the making process of the black opium type. Which I believe I just call it black opium on my website. If you're interested, if you're looking for shampoo bars. So now that I have all my liquid ingredients and all my dry ingredients all measured out, all I do is give it a mix around with a spatula. And funny story, I actually broke the spatula on the second or third batch. So there you go, dollar store spatulas, you get what you pay for. So I just kind of... Mix it all around, try and get all of the dry stuff incorporated a little bit. And then I get in there with my hands shortly after. Now, I, I want to reiterate that this is the best shampoo bar recipe I have ever used. It makes a Play-Doh consistency um, dough. There's no melting. There's no goopy mess. There's no screwing around. Like, I have bought recipes. I have formulated my own and when I found this particular formula and I tweaked it the, with, you know, the ingredients that I wanted, this is by far the easiest and nicest formula to work with. No, no heating anything up, no, no making a big mess. It's no, no having to pour and, you know, I don't know. I just really like it. I also much prefer using all of the dry powdered ingredients as opposed to using the prills or the noodles. Now, I actually buy my SCI noodles from, where do I buy them from? From Windy Point Soap. And I buy them as noodles because they're almost half the price of the powder for the same thing. And all I do is, is I, I take a kilogram bag of them at a time and I grind them up in a little um spice grinder and then i put them back in the bag and that's what i use and it's just way cheaper and it's definitely worth my time it takes 10 or 15 minutes so anyway once i get um my stuff all mixed together then i play with it just like play-doh this is very much like a play-doh consistency and i love it it is so easy to work with have i said that already it's super easy to work with so now that we've got it all mixed up i'm going to take out my mold now this is a four cavity mold. I believe I bought it on AliExpress. I have six of them and you can find them on AliExpress. You can find them on Amazon. You can probably find them on Timu. They're inexpensive and they are the perfect size for shampoo and conditioner bars, shampoo bars specifically. I make my conditioner bars smaller actually because I find they last a long time. And I also don't make as many as I do shampoo bars because they don't sell as fast. So all I do is I put my mold on the scale, tear it out, and then I divide my dough into four. Now, these molds, I break my dough up into balls of about between 90 and 95 grams. And by the way, this batch to make four, I believe is 400 grams. So I make a 400 gram batch and it makes four shampoo bars with enough left over for myself. So each one of these balls is about 90, 95 grams and the leftover, I have a little puck and I use it for myself. Now, like I said, these shampoo bars, I label them at 85 grams and that's about where they cure out to between 85 and 90. This shampoo bar, if you use it every single day, is going to last you a minimum of three months. 
they last longer for me. I have short hair and yeah. The little puck is about a third of the size. And there you see it here. This is what um, about the size um, leftover that I get that I use for myself in the shower. This lasts me four to six weeks easy. So by the time I run out of the four little pucks that I make from my four batches of shampoo bars, I'm usually ready to restock and then I have a fresh new set of um, shampoo bars for myself. So all we're going to do after we get these um, measured out is we're just going to press them all in firmly with our fingers into the mold. You could use a hand press, you could use a bath bomb press, anything that you want. Um, I like these molds. I find they come out the perfect size every time. They fit a two inch round label perfectly back and front. So this is what I use. If I ever get to the point where I'm going to be making, um, really upping my production, I probably will go to some kind of hand mold or multi, um, multi mold that I can, you know, press like six at a time or whatever. But right now this suits my purposes because although my shampoo bars sell well, I'm not selling tons and tons of them. So I'm not making tons of them. And I really only make, like when I restock, I usually do four cents at a time and I do four bars each. That way there's some selection for my customers, but I don't have tons of product that's sitting waiting to be sold. So yeah, so all I do is I just get it all pressed in there nice and firmly, use the palm of my hand to flatten it out. And like I said, it's so easy to use this recipe. It just turns out perfectly every time. And the bars turn out absolutely rock hard. I, I bang them on the counter and it's just, they're so rock hard. And that's after 24 hours. I would say 48 to 72 hours after you mold them, you can sell them. Like I, there's not so much water that has to evaporate from them that you couldn't sell them after about 42, uh, 48 to 72 hours. So, you know, two to three days. So I made these, I believe, on Sunday. And on Monday night, I unmolded them. And hold on a second, let's just pause this. So here we go, I was just um, banging it on the uh, table so that you could hear just how hard they are. And honestly, I didn't really hear that on my screen, so. It's just making sure that I, uh, I turn the sound on. But here we go. This is what they look like out of the mold. They are super rock hard, nice and shiny. They're a nice, pretty purple color. And also remember, too, when you're using colorants, mica will darken a little bit over, you know, the couple days. So don't go crazy. But anyway, that is um, the quick and dirty how I make uh, shampoo bars. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you're looking to pick yourself up a shampoo bar, please um, head over to my website. And if you're looking for my exact recipe, I might post it over on Patreon eventually. I'm not sure because, because yeah, because you can get a really good recipe from Humble Bee and Me. You don't need to pay for mine. But anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Thanks again.